You've done all your study, your hard work, your preparation. Now it's exam day. What do you do on exam day? Well, the first piece of advice I have for you is to arrive at the exam center about 20 minutes early. And this could vary a little bit depending on what your commute looks like. How far away are you from the testing center? What traffic conditions might you likely run into? Plan that out, but try to get there about 20 minutes early. That way, if there is some unexpected traffic delay for a few minutes, it's not going to put you behind and stress you out even more. And after you first get to the testing center, you're sitting there in your car. Some people like to look over their notes during this time, and I used to do that. But I found, for me, that looking over my notes while sitting in my car outside of the training center made me even more stressed. So instead, what I'll normally do is just use that time to uh, relax, breathe deeply, get mentally prepared for what's ahead of me. And I like to enter the testing center about 15 minutes ahead of time. So ideally, I'm sitting in my car just calming myself down for about five minutes. Then I go into the testing center. Why do you want to go into the testing center 15 minutes early? Well, there is a registration process that you go through. You have to show your ID. They may want to lock things up. A testing center that I frequently visit makes me take off my watch. I have to give them my wallet. If I have a cell phone, I have to turn that over. I'm not even allowed to take my car keys into the testing room. Apparently, there are USB keychains out there, and they're afraid that somebody's going to bring in a set of car keys and copy the questions off to a USB flash drive. And it takes time to get all that turned over to the testing center staff and get that locked away. And they also take your picture. And in addition to that, there might be a line. You may have to wait for one or two other people to get registered. Then you're ushered into the test room itself. You sit down in front of the computer and you're just about ready to begin. What I recommend doing now is using a little trick to calm your nerves just before you get started. This is a trick that I learned watching the Winter Olympics one year. I was noticing that Apollo Ono, one of the top short track speed skaters for Team USA, I noticed that as he was getting prepared for his race, he was skating around yawning. And that just fascinated me. I thought, why is he yawning? He's at the Olympics. Is he bored? What's going on with the yawning? And it wasn't just once. Almost every time I would watch him race, he yawned before he took off. And then I heard an announcer explain what he was doing. The announcer explained that that's a technique that Apollo Ono uses to calm his nerves. I'd never heard of that before, but I started using it. And you know what? It does an amazing job to calm your nerves. So as you're sitting there in front of the computer, <sighs> take a deep relaxing yawn and it's really going to calm you down. And as you get into the testing engine, you might be asked to take a survey about how long did it take you to drive to the testing center or something like that. You may be asked if you want to go through a tutorial. And if it's your first time taking a Cisco exam, you may want to go through that tutorial. But I would go ahead and launch the tutorial so my session didn't time out. I would go ahead and get started with the tutorial. But the tutorial gives you a certain amount of time that doesn't count against your test time. And while the tutorial clock is running, I would then make a couple of tables. In many testing centers, you're given a laminated piece of paper and a dry erase marker. I would, on that laminated piece of paper, make a couple of tables, a subnet table and a powers of two table. A subnet table can be really, really handy if you're doing some subnet calculations. For example, let's say that you're given a topology, and that topology has a subnet with a subnet mask of 255.255.192.0. By having this table created ahead of time, you'll be able to see exactly how many bits are in the subnet mask. Well, we've got a 192 in the third octet. We look at the table we created, and we see that's an 18-bit subnet mask. And if this is a Class B network, that means we have two borrowed bits. How many subnets can we create from two borrowed bits? Well, it's two raised to the power of n, where n is the number of borrowed bits. We can look at our powers of two table. Two raised to the second power, that's four. We can create four subnets with this subnet mask. And as you get started in the exam, it's going to say how many questions you have and how much time you have allotted. Just as an example, let's say that you had 70 questions and you have 90 minutes to complete the questions. You can do some quick math in your head and realize that you've got just over one minute per question on average. And I almost always will check myself at about the midpoint of an exam to make sure that I'm on pace. Take the 70 questions, divide that in half. That's 35. What's half of 90 minutes? 
45 minutes. 45 minutes into the exam, I'll want to check to see, have I done 35 questions? Am I ahead of pace? Am I behind pace? Do I need to speed up or am I on a good pace? And certainly some questions are going to take longer than other questions. You may have simulation questions that will take longer than a quick multiple choice question. And some questions might have you doing some complex subnet calculations. That might take a little bit longer. But my recommendation is that you never spend more than 10 minutes on any one question. By spending too much time on one question, you might cause yourself to miss other questions that you simply don't have time for at the end of your exam. And in most Cisco exams, you're not allowed to go back. So it's not a matter of, okay, I'm stuck, I'll come back to this later. You probably will not be allowed to come back to it later. You just need to make your best guess if it's a multiple choice type of question and move on. Don't spend more than 10 minutes on a question. And then when you're ready to get going, begin with confidence. After all, you've put in many hours preparing for this. You're ready for this. You've studied every topic on the entire exam blueprint. And I'll share a motto with you that I used to use a lot in my early career. I remember saying this to myself, maybe as I'm driving in my car going to an exam, or maybe I'm on my way to a meeting. I used to say to myself, I overwhelm my challenges with preparation. I've done more than enough to be prepared. That's what I want for you. I want you to go into that exam environment being more than enough prepared.